a limit day. One, two, three, four, a limit day. <laughs> I'm Sarah. I'm originally from Arkansas, and I'm in Denver to look for a man to take home to mama. I'm a student here in Colorado, and I wait tables for money, and mom and dad take care of me, too. I like boys who like to be outdoors, have a good time, don't mind getting dirty, going camping, but know how to clean up and go out for a night out in the town also. The guy that's going to get a kiss is going to be the one that's the most outgoing, the most into me, and the one who acts like he wants to get a kiss. For round one, I'm having the guys meet me at the banks of the Platte River here in Denver, Colorado. I thought I'd take them fly fishing. Fly fishing is an important part of my life because if it weren't for fly fishing or hunting, I don't think my dad and I would have had anything to talk about. I don't think about introducing my daughter to any girls unless we're actually thinking about spending the rest of our lives together. My name's Jason. I'm a dad. Proud of it, but I still find time for dating. My hair is definitely venomous. My personality is venomous. Uh, my tattoo is partial venom taking me over. I'm Jason and my venom is here to take over and get wrecked whether you like it or not. I'm gonna show her a little romance and dancing and if she's lucky, a little deep dancing. I'm Kevin and I'm unstoppable, baby. Well, I got plenty of nicknames. The Banger, Thornator, Thorzine, Thorfiend, Thoron when I'm being dumb. Everybody loves Thor because I'm Thorific. My name's Thor, you just don't get a nickname. Somebody just can't give you the nickname, you earn it. For the date today, I thought I'd take you guys fly fishing. And um, so I got our stuff all set up over here. We'll go put on our boots and get in the water. Fly fishing's a great thing to do on a first date because it's active, it's fun, and it gets you outside and you kind of get to know what the guys like to do. Am I supposed to hold this with my left hand or what? <laughs> this getting all tangled up. This is ridiculous, I can't. <laughs> I always wanted to go fly fishing, but it, it sucks. So what do you do thing? for a living? Well, I'm a full-time student and right now I drive Sarah, you and me are tangled. We are all tangled. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to hug me, Sarah. Delivery. You I do what? To, I go to, I deliver for a job. What do you actually deliver? I deliver pizzas. <laughs> you deliver pizzas? <laughs> yes. And so what have you been doing, Jason? Uh, over the past year and a half, I have been uh, basically taking under my best friend slash president of the company's way, showing me the whole ropes about about like uh, uh, delinquent dads and collecting mm -hmm. it. Um, and also, how do you feel about delinquent dads? How do I? No, delinquent debts. Oh, dads! I thought you said dads. Yes, he's a dad. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. Yes, yes, indeed. Proud of it. Got a child? Yeah, me too, man. Yeah, two and a half years old. Ain't nothing like a Joey the Wolf, man. Hey, we don't have any baggage. We don't have any baggage. How are you going to have a relaxing evening with it? Or, I mean, even if not, there if the kids It's hard to meet a woman that doesn't have any kids. Oh, I see. You know, nice okay. Your daughter, no, that's okay, one at a time, one at a time. No. I can't hear everybody. That's more power to you, but when you're screen, trying to man. court somebody new. You should never have kids, man. You would never that's have the patience. I'm going to have it once. I'm going to do it right. I miss you all messed up. You don't have See, the thing, the difference between you guys and I is when I do it, I'm going to do it straight all the way with my wife. Y'all messed up or you wouldn't be here single. Dude, you're a pizza delivery guy. You're dissing us by being bad parents when we're really being a man and stepping in there and taking care of a kid. I am not ready to be a mother to these kids. I don't want to be a mother to anybody's children but my own. Okay. You look at the facts. The facts is you're here on the show for what? To meet to a, a nice the girl friend. of my dreams. <laughs> okay, are you saying she's it? There's a good possibility. There's a good possibility. And how do you think she feels about that? Why do you think you're the one who gets to put a lot of pressure on her, man? For one, hour. I have a lot of things going in, for my, in my life. I'm and not talking about in the, half an hour, in the half an hour. In the half an hour. In the half an hour we have, what's going to set you apart Let's from us? Let's hear a little bit, bro. Besides <laughs> all the stuff that you... Aside, aside from me actually going somewhere in I life, say, and I me actually having goals, dreams, dreams that, that, are actually, that are actually right there in my grasp. They're in my grasp. You know, I am like... Seriously, I'm getting mad. No. Getting no, dysfunctional. Not getting mad at all. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Guys, kid. guys, are we here for you guys to argue or are we here to get to know her? Exactly. So, like, I'm there to meet the girl, not to hear a few ding dongs go at it, you know? Does the baby blue have more than the venom? The venom. I don't know. 
you like what baby blue seal? G.I. Joe. What's the venom? The venom is, well, first of all, it starts out with the wardrobe. It starts out okay. with the hair, the personality, the ability to wreck. See, like, homeboy's always trying to be me already. Damn. Yeah. Why do you yeah, say yeah, that? Why, did, why is he trying to be you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he automatically was just talking down, talking about him. Yeah, I'm a pizza delivery boy. And I make more money than him. And I don't have to pay <laughs> some little kid. I don't have to pay some little kid. I don't have to pay for kids. I don't have to act like I'm a high roller that I'm not because I know. And that's right. simple as that. I mean, if you look at it, what do you want? Looks? You want material things? I have a bike, a car, and a house. What does he have? A broke-ass kid. <laughs> a broke-ass kid? Big that's big harsh. Big that's big harsh. You're kidding. Man. You're full of crap. I am the champ, and I will wreck, and I will be the last man. Coming up, who will Sarah cut first? Maybe this guy knows. I would fish down river the whole time, and city boy and his spiky hair should be eliminated, I would think. He would be my first choice of getting out of there. So guys, I had a lot of fun fly fishing with you today, even though it was raining a little bit. And the sun has come out now for one of you to unfortunately get the boot and it's gonna have to be or I'm sorry Aww. I'm gonna have to let you go <laughs> I'm sorry I had a lot of fun I'm glad you came out and tried fly fishing with me though oh you're lost there sweetie okay <laughs> I'm going clubbing adios Thor bye Thor I didn't really like how he said it was my loss because throughout the whole date he was trying to cater to me and be nice to me and then as soon as he gets dumped he's like, your loss? It's like, whatever. Not too charmed with the accent and really I didn't feel too much there. She's real timid and I'm definitely not looking for someone timid. Dad number one is out of the way and dad number two is next. Sarah, you missed out on the Thorganic Thorgasm. You're gonna be regretting it till you're 50. So for round two, I thought we'd get out of these fisherman clothes, get dressed up, go to Club Purple. Here they got a great lounge and have some cocktails. I have a lot of guy friends and they always ask me about, you know, how to treat a girl. And I would always give them advice on how to treat a girl and how they should act with a girl. So if you were to give one piece of advice to a girl, what would you get? What would you get, Kevin? One piece of advice to a girl? Yeah, one piece of like sex advice, love advice, sex whatever advice, you want to say. Sex advice, love advice. Yeah. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I speak your language, brother. Kid, answer. What advice would I give a woman? <laughs> what? Huh? Any of y'all are a lover, you know? So is there anything you can show me, show me that you're a lover? What do you want? You want a massage? You want a hair thing? What, you, what, do, you, what do you have to offer? Oh, I, ha I actually have it all. I love to kiss some hair? very oral. Hair? Well, let's very, see how oral you are. Very oral. Oh, goodness. Seconds, my friend. Sloppy seconds. Oh, damn. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you can clearly see she got taken over by me because I am I that I am. And that is it. You know, guys, I had a really good time with you in our second round here at Club Purple. And I really enjoyed kissing all three of you. But, you know, now's the time to cut one of you. And I'm so sorry to say that it's going to have to be Kevin. happy as hell about our decision. I wish you would have got rid of me the first round. So for round 
three, we stayed at Club Purple and I brought all my boys down to the dance floor and it got a little bit nasty, which I kind of liked. I almost gave her an orgasm in the cage, so I had to calm down just a little bit. At one point, I kind of thought maybe Jason was trying to make baby number two in that cage. There's Jason. He was like this. I took the boys down to the VIP room because I really had some questions from the boys that I need answered. We've done the whole arguing thing, you know. I yeah, really so wanted to kind of folks about Sarah. Let I really wanted to kind of get down and see what you had to offer me. Why should I pick you? That's a very good question because it's four years in the making. Four years ago, there was words that were said that were not said. They were left quiet. I think now, about four years later, now that I'm actually being able to like be myself and be with you and showing you that the type of person how I've matured and become the man who I am, I think is the guy that you deserve. Okay. The difference between me and the chump over here is I don't have to wait till I mess up and get a girl pregnant and wait four years later to say something I didn't say the first time. I'm seeing you now, not in four years from now, and telling you that I won't make that mistake and that all I have to be given is one chance to show you that everything I'm saying is true. I don't have to come at you four years later and make fun of him. Okay, so do you have anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to say to help me make my decision? I want you to not take what I'm saying for scrap because it's not the wisdom that determines the age, it's the age that determines the wisdom. And I don't have to, I don't, like I said, I don't have to make a great mistake to understand what I have. And how do you feel about have. that? How I feel about that is my little girl was never a mistake. She is, she has half of my heart. I'm looking to share the other half of my heart with somebody else. And I'm looking to share my whole heart with somebody. So you know guys, I had a really good time dancing with you. It was just a really wonderful experience to get to know how you like to move on the dance floor. And you know, Jason, I really felt like we had a connection from the first moment that you brought the flowers to me in the round one. And, and even in round two and in round three, I felt like we really had a connection. And I know you felt it too. I did. And you know, Jason, you offered me the fairy tale. Every girl wants the fairy tale. You know, so I really wanna maybe see where the fairy tale goes. Absolutely, I can be more happy, baby. Mm. 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> That's all good. I really appreciate it. Okay. Okay. I have a little too much venom to offer some people, and the truth hurts. Uh, fairy tales is fairy tales because it's false. I felt the connection today, and you know, I was really interested in seeing where it would go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my God, baby. Oh my God. What I would not lose for even in defeat is a valuable lesson learned, so it evens it up for me.